The Mitsubishi Outlander is the brand's most popular vehicle, by sales figures, of course. In terms of outright popularity, the Lancer Evolution would probably take the top prize. However, this new generation of the Outlander shares a lot of its underpinnings with the new Nissan Rogue. So is this SUV good enough to continue Mitsubishi's upward sales trend? Well, let's go for a drive and find out. So under the hood, this Mitsubishi Outlander has the exact same engine that the Nissan Rogue has. It's a 2.5 liter naturally aspirated four cylinder. However, for the 2022 model year, the Nissan Rogue will get an optional 1.5 liter three cylinder turbo engine, which does produce more power and it's more fuel efficient than this engine. However, for 2023, the Mitsubishi Outlander will be available with a plug-in hybrid powertrain, which I expect it probably will be more powerful and even more fuel efficient. However, that's then and this is now. So this 2.5 liter engine produces 181 horsepower and 181 pound-feet of torque. It's not the most powerful base engine out of all of these crossover SUVs, but at least it is more powerful than the old four-cylinder in the previous generation of the Outlander. I think that one had about 166 horsepower or something like that. When you're driving like a reasonable person, then you're not really going to be impeding anybody behind you. You can accelerate at a pretty reasonable pace. However, on highways, when you want to overtake another vehicle, let's say a semi-trailer, then make sure you plan that move ahead of time because it takes a while for this car to get up to speed. But at least it's pretty decent on fuel economy. It is rated for 9.7 liters per 100 kilometers in a city and 7.9 liters per 100 kilometers on a highway. Currently, I'm averaging about 9.5 liters per 100 kilometers, but that's because this week that I've had it, it's been really cold. So in the mornings, I've been letting it sit idle for a few minutes until it warms up a bit. However, I did take a couple of longer trips and I did notice that the fuel economy numbers did drop to as low as 7.7 .7 liters per 100 kilometers. So if you have a long commute and it takes you primarily on highways, then this engine is pretty economical. And it can achieve those highway fuel economy figures because it is paired with a CVT automatic. Now I know, I know CVTs are not the most enjoyable transmissions out there, but at least they are really good at providing the most amount of fuel economy. This one is at least a little bit more responsive than previous iterations of CVT automatics. It does behave like a traditional CVT when you're just cruising around town, as in it'll hold the engine's RPM at say 2000 until you get to your desired speed and then it'll drop them back down. But then when you mash the throttle pedal, then it will give you virtual gears and it'll try to imitate an automatic transmission. It doesn't do a very good job of that, but hey, at least it's trying. Bless its soul. This Outlander doesn't feel particularly too engaging to drive around twists and turns, but because it is based on the new Nissan Rogue platform, it is a little bit better to drive than the previous generation. The steering is also a little bit more direct, so you feel like it's though it's connected to the front wheels. Still not the most enjoyable crossover SUV to drive around on a twisting and winding road, but you can push it a little bit and not have a giant queue of cars behind you. One thing to note, the seating position is high up, so you get good visibility, but the car feels a lot wider than it actually is from behind the steering wheel. On paper, it is physically larger by only a few centimeters over its rogue cousin, but it's about the same width as the Kia Sorento, 
and that SUV didn't feel quite as big from behind the steering wheel when I drove it. The Mitsubishi Outlander comes standard with super all-wheel control in Canada. In the United States, it is optional. This is a four-wheel drive system that uses the brakes to control side-to-side -side wheel slip and an electronically controlled differential with a clutch for front and rear power transfer. The Outlander has six different drive modes to choose from, Eco, Normal, Tarmac, Gravel, Snow, and Mud. The ride of the 2022 Mitsubishi Outlander is compliant over most bumps and poorly maintained roads. It's not the most plush ride, but it's not the most firm ride either. However, it's the seats that provide the most comfort with plenty of support for your back in addition to soft and well padded cushions. But it's the driver's seat that has more adjustability. The passenger seat can only move four ways even on this top spec GT premium trim. As for the interior of the Mitsubishi Outlander, it feels like you've stepped into the Nissan Rogue. All of it looks very, very similar. In fact, if you cover up the Mitsubishi logo on the steering wheel as well as the Nissan logo on the steering wheel of the Rogue, I'm pretty sure 9 out of 10 people would say that they're the exact same car, just different colored interior trimmings. The placement of the infotainment system is exactly the same as in the Rogue as well as the quick access buttons right underneath it. Climate controls are exactly the same, the buttons on the steering wheel are exactly the same as in the Rogue, as well as the gear selector and drive mode selector on the center console. But in the Mitsubishi, they are a little bit different in their design. They feel a little bit more robust than the ones in the Nissan Rogue. As well, the full digital driver display right in front of me has the exact same menu layout as the one in the Rogue. And I'm pretty sure it also has the same font as the one in the Rogue. The only difference on this Outlander is that the gauges are using a different graphic. But apart from that, like I said, it all looks very similar. However, I do like the use of different materials and also different colors in this Outlander. The quilted, well, semi-quilted leather on the seats as well as the door panels. And I love this orange contrast all along the door panels, dashboard, and center console. One thing that I really, really hate, if you've watched my previous videos, then you probably already know this, the gloss black plastics. It's down here on the center console, on the buttons, right underneath the infotainment, on the climate controls, and a little bit around the door handles. Right here on the center console, it's really going to get scratched up. In fact, I can already see the scratches, and this car has less than 6,000 kilometers on it. The ones on the climate controls probably won't get as easily scratched, but fingerprints and dust will easily be visible. Apart from that, like I said, it's pretty much a copy and paste job from the Nissan Rogue. It's like that saying back in school, you can copy my work, but just change it enough so that the teacher doesn't notice. But while the Outlander looks the same, it does provide occupants with more space than the Rogue. In fact, it has similar interior dimensions to slightly larger SUVs like the Chevy Blazer and Nissan Murano. So at 6'4", I have plenty of space both in the front and in the back behind my driving position. Additionally, the Mitsubishi Outlander also has a third row. But that third row should only be used if you find yourself in a pinch. Tiny does not even begin to accurately describe just how little space there is in the third row of the Mitsubishi Outlander. Behind the third row though, the 2022 Outlander has 332 liters of cargo space. Fold the rear seats down and that number increases to 949 liters, with maximum cargo capacity being 2,257 liters with the third and second rows folded. One thing to note, the second row seats do not fold completely flat they have a bit of an incline. The 2022 Mitsubishi Outlander starts at a reasonable $31,998 Canadian for the ES trim with super all-wheel control. A fully loaded GT Premium with super all-wheel control will cost you just over $10,000 more at $42,178 Canadian. Just like many other SUVs on the market, 
The 2022 Outlander comes standard with a comprehensive suite of advanced driver and safety aids. The only options that change with higher spec trims are the adaptive cruise control with stop and go functionality, traffic sign recognition, lane keep assist, and active blind spot assist. As for convenience features, it has the usual stuff like cow skin on the seats, an open hole in the roof, this thing opens and closes on its own, these are heated, so are these, and this. You can recharge your phone without using wires, there's some numbers on the windshield, peasant blockers in the back, you can have Waze guide you wirelessly if you have a fruity smartphone, but you have to use a wire if you have a robotic smartphone, and you can see what the birds see, among many other things. And finally, the warranty is a long one. 10 years or 160,000 kilometers for both powertrain and new vehicle limited, whichever comes first. In the US, it's the same time period but 100,000 miles. However, that's only for the powertrain. The new vehicle limited warranty is 5 years or 60,000 miles. So while this new generation of the Mitsubishi Outlander is basically a Nissan Rogue with a different body on top of it, it really benefited from the Mitsubishi Nissan Alliance because it really feels much more refined and a little bit better to drive than the previous generation Outlander. Between the two, personally, I'd probably pick the Outlander over the Rogue because I just like how it looks a lot more both on the outside and on the inside. However, if you plan on using it as a three-row SUV, might I suggest something else? Maybe the Kia Sorento or maybe even something bigger like the Nissan Pathfinder or the Honda Pilot. Because the third row in this is extremely tiny and it really should only be used if you find yourself in a pinch. But if you want to know more about this Mitsubishi Outlander, I wrote a more detailed review of it over on my website. You can find that link in the video description or click the pop-up banner up here. And as always, I will see you in the next car or truck or most likely it'll probably be another SUV. Anyway, thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe and see you in the next video.